Welcome to the Walk Around Podcast. Our goal is to share with you the insights, the skills, the processes, and the leaders that are influencing the retail automotive landscape today. I'm one of your hosts, Danny Vendrell, joined as always by Nick Funch, and of course, with one of our guests today, George Placencia, who is the co-founder, chairman, and CEO of Republica Havas, one of America's leading creative media and communications agencies. Since launching the firm in 2006, he has provided strategic brand, creative communications, and growth counsel to Fortune 500 companies, including Walmart, Toyota, and Google. So let's take a walk around with George. So George, a little bit about yourself, just for for the listeners that um, are are, are curious, you know, we talked about some of the growth counsel advising that you've done, obviously strategic brand messaging, just a little bit about kind of your, your background. Well, um, I, I, I was born in, in bred, um, I live in Miami. So I was born and bred down here. My, my family, um, exiled, uh, from Cuba in 1961. Um, you know, they were the political exiles in, in, in 1961. So, um, my parents, um, met here in, in, uh, in the States and, uh, my brother and I were both born years later, um, um, here in Miami, um, started my career as um, you know, summer job gopher at a, at a radio station here in Miami. Um, I, I done my plethora as a, as a radio promotions guy of uh, radio remotes at car dealers, um, hundreds, if not thousands of them um, in my early years, um, um, you know, working in, you know, throughout, throughout high school and, and college. Uh, but, you know, kind of started in radio um, then, um, Worked there for a number of years, then got a great opportunity to go work for um, Wayne Heisinger, um, a, yeah. you, know, you know, a legend in many industries, including automotive, uh, for Wayne Heisinger at the uh, Florida Marlins. Uh, so I worked at the Marlins. I was uh, lucky enough to be there during an, an amazing time of um, growth and success for the Marlins. Um, in um, in 96 and 97, I was, uh, you know, I was 21, 22 years old. Um, you know, working in marketing and doing a lot of, um, um, you know, reaching, reaching our community at the Marlins. I was lucky enough that the team um, went to the World Series, won the World Series during that time. So great memories uh, of that. From there, I, I, I went off to the entertainment and music industry to work for, um, you know, one of our hometown um, superstars, Gloria Estefan, and her husband, Emilio, as um, kind of, um, you know, headed up marketing and communications for them and, and, and then uh, led their artist management division and was involved in a lot of the different facets of their business. Then got the opportunity to go back, uh, was there for a number of years and then got a great opportunity to go back to radio, but more on a national level, um, leading uh, marketing communications for a group of radio stations across the country and in Puerto Rico. Um, so um, did that. And um, that company ended up being bought by a big media company, Univision. So got to really, you know, Univision is the largest Hispanic uh, American media uh, company, um, especially back then at the time was was just a behemoth in Hispanic uh, America and uh, got to know the, the U.S. Hispanic market intimately, especially during that time. Um, there's nothing more local than, you know, radio and TV. So obviously got to know our local communities across the country. And then in 2006, um, my business partner, who um, who's our chief creative officer, our president, chief creative officer, and I joined forces. He brought you know, the creative side. I brought more of the marketing and strategy business side. And he and I joined forces and started Republica in 2006. Grew, grew, grew. Despite the recession back then, the, the agency grew. Um, we've been now working with uh, Toyota, um, you know, for, uh, I would say, about seven years. Um, Walmart for about the same uh, Google for about nine years. So we have a number of clients that we've had for many years. And then two years ago, we joined forces with a global um, entity called Havas. Havas is a global um, agency based in Paris that has um, offices um, around the world. Proud to say that um, we're their outfit here um, based in Miami, um, doing great work. And we're also their lead multicultural agency in the United States. Obviously, multicultural marketing, as you all know, you know includes... Hispanics, African Americans, Asians, um, uh, LGBTQ plus, and other communities. So um, that's an area that um, that as an agency we we excel in. I mean, we we do do great marketing to reach consumers despite tradition, language, culture. Um, but multicultural marketing is obviously an area that uh, has been a stronghold for us for for years. So that's a little bit on me, George. That's um, 
I mean, the experience level and kind of the insights into marketing and making sure you're kind of appealing to um, all consumers. Uh, I definitely want to get there. But first, I got to take you back because I'm really curious about something. Sure. If you think back to all of those remotes on car dealership lots, if you had to set an over under a guesstimate, how many hot dogs did you eat during all those um, all, all those live remotes? I mean, like in you the know, hundreds and the thousands, like yeah. so. So okay. since we were listen, since we were in South Florida, I'd say hot dogs and arroz con pollo, which is chicken and rice. Oh yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Yeah, so I would say it was a mixture of hot dogs and arroz con pollo. I would say it was um, it, it was in the thousands. <laughs> <laughs> which is, um, you know, if, you, if, if you've ever been a remote tech or worked at a car dealer, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. Um, but um, yeah, but those were, you know what, Nick, those were formative years and years where I really got to appreciate, um, you know, um, the auto industry and got to appreciate, um, you know, uh, competition, you know, from from all the different dealers and and, you know, and I got to understand how this dealer would do it. These would be that one. And they both had the same flag of, you know, cars that they would sell. Yet um, the experience was very different. And I was yeah. a young kid. I was a young kid. Yet I was I was seeing how, man, these guys do it right. They take care of their customers. These guys, uh, you know, or or this XYZ brand dealer in the middle of nowhere. Um, you know, location is also key. You know, so sure. all, those, all those things were... Um, now that now you've made me think back to that time, Nick. But it, it, you know, it, it it really was, I think, um, kind of just foundational for for my own career. Yeah, it is amazing. I think there's a lot of lessons there. And, and yeah. I think early on in in anyone's career, and and I you got myself thinking about you know the, <laughs> um, some of those early days. But it, as you kind of reflect back, and whether it's some of those foundational things that you learned, or how, how the 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 market has changed, right? And I think the the in, in two facets. One, it's the population that we're marketing to has changed, but then the um, the mediums to get to those um, consumers. And, and as you kind of think of those two lanes, you know what what should kind of um, automotive dealers or anyone really be thinking about as kind of the the uh, medium as well as kind of who you're appealing to. No, I I think. <sighs> You know, I know, I know, um, you know, as we speak to, to um, auto dealers in the auto industry, you know, I think it's agnostic, to be honest with you, to, to industry. It's just connecting with people, you know, and how to connect with people in, 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 in human ways. I mean, we're, you know, we're, we're all, you know, on this thing all day, right? And we're on our computers, our laptops, our, our iPads, our phones, what have you, all day. Um, but, you know, who's receiving that content, who's receiving it? is not a bot. It's not a robot. It's human beings, right? So mm -hmm. we need to make sure that we're speaking and connecting with these folks um, in, 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 in normal, just genuine uh, ways that, that, um, um, that really connect, right? And I always speak to, you know, in my world, you know, how, how are we making sure that um, we're connecting intellectually, right? That, you know, people want to make the decision, the purchase decision to, to buy whatever it is, um, but also, how are we connecting with them in in their you know in their being, and how are we tugging at the heartstrings um, to make sure that you know that message that they're that they're getting on radio or TV or that's being served to them um, through uh, you know through social or 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 through the you know internet or what have you is a message that truly resonates, right? Because um, you know today more than ever we have the opportunity. Um, to do that. We have the opportunity to make sure that, you know, myself, I live, as I said, I was born in Miami, Cuban parents, I'm Cuban American. I truly live in two worlds, right? I live, I live my Anglo existence, being American and, 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 and being very proud of that. Yes. Yet I also live my parents' heritage and their culture. And more and more, um, Hispanics are staying really connected to that, you know, my brother is 13 years older than me. When he was growing up, he had to shun that culture. Mm -hmm. My generation, we embrace that culture, you know, with the, you know, the music, the food, um, just the, the folklore, you know, all the different parts of the culture. So we're able to juxtapose the, you know, with these two cultures. Well, how do you reach both sides of me? Right. How are you reaching both sides of me? And the way to do that obviously is, um, is, is through, 
you know, content that's relevant to me, content that's meaningful and content that's going to make me want to connect um, in a genuine way with the brand, right? It could be a local car dealer, could be a local restaurant. It could be, you know, major national brand, you know, uh, tier one, whatever it is um, you want, you want to make sure, um, you, you know, that, and, and as I like to say, Nick, and, in, in, you know, because some, sometimes people say to me, well, you know, we'll just take the ad, you know, when we're talking about to Hispanic specifically, we'll just take the ad and we'll translate it. You know, right. we'll, and we'll translate. And like, I like to say a lot gets lost in translation, you know, <laughs> you know, because it's not only about translating, it's about taking whatever you're trying to say, um, you know, to that Caucasian audience, that Anglo audience, how do you take that and how do you morph it? in a way that's culturally relevant to, to these, to these um, diverse audiences. Right. So anyway, that's what we do every day. And I think I saw a stat recently and it's, it escapes my mind right this second, but um, I'm certain you have some insight here, but it's critical because I think brand loyalty is high within kind of the, the Hispanic and African-American communities. And if, if you're trying to kind of peanut butter spread that approach across all um, you're, you're missing, you're missing the boat, right? That that's um, you know that's correct. And you know if you were to look at you know, nationally a brand that over the years has done it well, obviously is Toyota. You know Toyota is a brand that that has been able to reach Hispanics, that has been able to reach um, communities of color, African American, and Asian in in, in authentic ways, right? Um, Toyota hasn't um, you know they 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 um, you know they have their their overarching message, right? They have their overarching message, but they've done a, a good job at at tailoring that message to audiences. And I think, you know, that's so important. And that's why, you know, to this day, Toyota is uh, the leading brand with Hispanics in this country. And I think it's because it's been doing this, you know, it's been doing this for a long time. But you, I could give you examples of, you know, Procter & Gamble. You know, Procter & Gamble has been reaching these audiences in culture for, you know, for decades. And, you know, when you go to, to speak to, you know, or you do research with, um, with Hispanics specifically, and you ask them about, you know, what, um, what brand of diapers do they use? You know, like immediately they'll say Pampers. Why? Because Pampers, again, has been connected. They'll say Tide, they'll say Crest, you know, because these are brands that are love marks in these communities and that, you know, for decades have been, have been connecting, right? So, um, and that loyalty is there, you know, the loyalty is there. And, and, uh, you know, even if they go to a, to a, to a discount, you know, outlet, they're going to look for those brands. Right. And if they don't have them there, they won't buy, they'll go to wherever they can find the brand that they're loyal to. I love that. I think that's so important too. just kind of how you, how you said understanding people and understanding right. what it is that motivates people, the way that they see the world. And a lot of that, like you said, comes from, your cultural upbringing, what's around you, where you come from. And a lot of that is just kind of human nature too. Yes. And taking those two things together and, and how do you create a, a brand voice and, and something that as simple as what does your website say that right. could resonate with people from all walks of life? Yeah, no, a hundred percent. That's, um, that's so true. And, 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 you know, the good news is I think more and more um, CMOs, C-suites are realizing that. You know, they're realizing that, you know, there's not one, you know, just one shotgun approach to everything. No, you've got, you've got to have your, you know, you've, as I like to say, Danny, um, you know, you, you, you've got to have your, again, your overarching message, but then you got to look at, you know, how do we, how do we tailor this message um, to reach people and culture, right? In the right way. Um, and, um, and, you know, I'm, I was, uh, I was at a hospital here over the, over the weekend, a, a dear friend was in the hospital. And um, I was, you know, every, anywhere, that, anytime that I'm somewhere, my marketing um, hat um, kind of always kind of turned on. You know, I was watching everyone that was coming in and this was in the high density Hispanic area, but I would say that 90% of the folks that walked in and out of this emergency room were Hispanic, right? Mm-hmm. And you, you know, and, 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 and it's one of those moments where you're like, Man, you know, brands that are catering to these folks, if they're not reaching them in culture, they're missing the boat. You know, they're missing the boat. And I think you you all maybe have experiences like that in your lives where you go somewhere and you're like, wow, this is a high density XYZ community area. Right. Well, again, 
you know, to reach those folks, um, you gotta, you gotta think about, you know, w w you know, what's the media they consume? What do they read? Um, you know, what's their, what, what's their, um, faith like, you know, are they, you know, are they into faith-based, are they very faith-based, which these communities are, you know, obviously. So all these things are just so important. Right. And, um, and that's why I enjoy what I do. Right. Cause I, um, you know, no two clients are alike and, and no two target audiences are alike. I mean, every, every brand has its unique opportunity, um, to carve its space. Every brand does. Right. And, and that's where we come in, you know, I, as I like to say in our industry, you know, they, what you see is the art, right. But I always say there's science behind the art, you know, there's right. science behind that radio spot, that TV commercial, that print ad, that, that, um, digital, um, ad that served to you or what have you, there's science behind that. And that's what we call street in our world strategy. You know, you gotta have, you know, all good creative, all big creative has to be born on strategy. It has to be born on truly understanding that consumer, what's going to make them tick and what's going to make them make that purchase decision. You know, and then obviously we have the journey, you know, the funnel, how do we, how do we take them through the purchase journey? Um, so anyway, all those things are fun. And um, it's what goes behind me, what I call the art, which is all the, everything you see in billboards or TV or whatever. Yeah, George, I guess there's a um, it's one thing to kind of market to to, um, you know, to be strategic in your marketing towards um, um, sure. specific kind of cultural bases. But it's another thing to kind of um, include them in your team. And I, I'd be curious just kind of on your thoughts around kind of diversity and inclusion and equity kind of just as as if I'm a business owner and, and how do I leverage kind of the value of that on my team um, to kind of attack it from a different front a little bit? You know, I, I think it, 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 it's in the day and age in which we're living, which is we're in 2021. Um, it, you know, you look at the makeup of, of the U.S. population and it's nearing 20 percent is Hispanic, you know, um, about 15 um, percent is African American, and then the Asian is a little bit less. But as you look at that, you know, when you aggregate all that, that's a big chunk of the population of the United States of America, right? right. And um, you know, unfortunately, Nick, um, you know, our, our our corporate boardrooms aren't representative of, of of that yet to the degree they should. Um, our C suites are not. Um, when we take it to the small business. You know, when we're looking at hiring cashiers or, you know, customer service reps or what have you, um, you know, sometimes we don't think with that in, in mind. So you have someone that shows up and there's no one there that speaks the language. You know, there's mm -hmm. no one there that can help them in Spanish or that can help them in Creole um, or um, or they can help them in in um, Chinese or what have you, you know, whatever the community you serve, um, you know, re requires. So I would just, you know, my, my, you know, as someone that obviously has, has been involved in this for years and, and that lives, does my best to live it um, the best I can day to day in regard to, um, you know, with our the people we hire and, and, and what have you, you know, I would just say that as you start looking at candidates, um, just make sure that you're, you know, that, that, that you're serving the community you're in, you know, mm -hmm. that you're serving the community you're in. And that uh, because what what happens, I strongly believe, is if somebody comes in wanting to buy something, in this case, let's say a car, and there's no salespeople that speak Español, you're going to lose that. You're going to lose that sale to another dealer that does have those people. Why? Because that person is not going to feel comfortable doing that deal in English because, you know, people that 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 are born speaking a language, whatever that first language is, could be Chinese, it could be Spanish, it could be anything. They will continue to do those key things throughout their lives in that native language, be it a business, you know, they'll think in Spanish, number crunching, they'll think they'll do it in Spanish or Chinese uh, or whatever language it is. Um, praying, they'll do it in that language, you know, because it's it's just that's how you're wired as you were a little baby, right? You were wired to 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 do it in that language. So I say that because it's just important that that as you know you're building a team that that that's there. And then the other side uh, about it is just you know having an equitable, inclusive team is just so much stronger to the organization. It makes the organization so much healthier. It makes diversity of thought present or ever present throughout meetings or 
you know, department head meetings or leaders meet, whatever you call them. Um, so, you know, making sure that it's representative of, of, of women, making sure that it's representative of, of Hispanics, of, of, of African Americans, of Asians, of, um, you know, people, people from, from walks of life that, that, um, that are not maybe um, what the place maybe looked like five, 10 years ago, but it's what the world is looking like today. Yeah. Well, it's that business, but it's what the world is looking like today. So, you know, the more we mirror what the world looks like, you know, at Havas, you know, we did um, this past year, we did a study um, and did some soul searching throughout North America. You know, we have pretty big offices in New York, Boston, Chicago, and California. Um, and we, we did a, we did this cert, we, we did this research and we realized that we did have disparities in regard to mm -hmm. having um, people of color um, throughout the organization. And Havas, we launched something called Commit to Change. And, um, and it's a, it's a, you know, it's a multi-year plan where we are committing to as we as we evolve, um, making sure that you know at the end of the day the best person is going to be hired for a role, right? Didn't, could be Caucasian, could be Hispanic, could be black, could be anything, man, woman, whatever it is. Um, but making sure that that pool of candidates is representative, right? That the people we're speaking to and that we're including in our candidate pool is representative. So so that you know we're we're making this this push. We're pushing our industry to do it too. Um, we launched a North America um, Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Committee um, that I'm um, honored to sit on this committee. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really interesting when you're on there, uh, Nick, and you're hearing um, from colleagues things that are really important to them that um, it's so important for you to understand that each of us come from different walks of lives right and that the power is in all of those beautiful things blending together and making the company better so anyway uh, i can i and i can speak speak to this for a while but um because obviously i'm passionate about it but um you know but i start with you know with where i I've end with where i started which is you know we need to see more of that presence at at the um at the board level of companies and in the c-suite i was super proud last week um um, Apple named a dear friend, her name is Monica Lozano, um, uh, to their board of directors. She happens to be a formidable executive yeah. who happens to be Hispanic, right? Um, so I, I, but, but first, you know, she's going to bring a lot to the table to Apple and to Apple's board. Um, but the fact that they were able to, you know, find a Hispanic woman um, to fill a seat that they had vacant, uh, again, that's what we need more of. Um, throughout throughout corporate America, so yeah, that's um, that's fantastic, and certainly couldn't agree more. I think the Danny, you know, I, I was kind of connecting two kind of thoughts here throughout our conversation today, and and George, you brought up this example where if if uh, a Hispanic goes to a dealership and they don't get the experience they want, whether it's language, whatever kind of barrier they are, they may go somewhere else. Well, then if you connect that back to kind of the brand loyalty piece. Guess where that referral business is going to end up, right? They're going to, it's going to end right back up where they got the experience and they felt comfortable in that, um, in that environment. And, you sure. know, I think, um, I think there's probably a good lesson in there that, that as you look at kind of your consumer experience on your showroom floor, um, there's downstream impacts and in, in kind of staying rooted in that community is, is critical for, for all those businesses. But, um, yeah. Yeah, Danny, give me one big takeaway from today. This has been a fantastic conversation. It's all about people, understanding people, understanding your communities, understanding what people um, are, are driven by their, their own uh, experiences and, and how could you, and I think we had a great conversation about kind of both sides, like externally, what's the message that your brand is, is, is telling the story that, that it's telling and how are you speaking to, to your audience? And then internally, how are you making sure that you have diversity of thought and perspectives and letting that be something that from the leadership down is represented in a way where you're serving your communities as well. And so I, I love that, that whole takeaway. It's all about, it starts at people. And if you're a dealer thinking about this and it's earlier in the year and um, you know, maybe it's a, you're energized by this, it's a new year's resolution. I think one of the points you made, George, that's awesome is, is just letting the conversation start. And letting that be something that 
is just a conversation that starts today and then tomorrow it grows and the day after it grows and goes from there. And it's okay to be uncomfortable. That's fine. Yeah. Because, because that's where you're going to find your comfort in those moments where you are uncomfortable as you kick it off and you're started because, and it's fine. It's never too late to start. It's never yeah. too late. Just, just start it because um, it's going to, it's going to make good business sense. Yeah. And I think uh, I wrote down two words today and it's like authentic and connection. And I, I think it's the rest kind of take care of cares of it takes care of itself. Sure. If you're really focused on being authentic and kind of understanding, I love how you keep bringing up, uh, at the end of the day, car dealers are, are rooted, invested in their local communities. Sure. If you under kind of understand that markup, that that market, you'll be able to kind of um, use that throughout your business. So, George, this has been great. I know um, RepublicaHavas.com. If um, if our listeners want to um, learn more about kind of your business and how you can help. Um, and if you're listening, if you enjoyed today's episode, please like it, share it with your friends, leave us a comment. Uh, we're always happy to kind of explore um, you know, interesting, uh, people and, and, um, thank you today, George, uh, for your time. I really, really appreciate it and really enjoyed the conversation. Uh, thank you, Nick and Danny. Really pleasure and, and congratulations on the podcast. It's excellent. Thank you. 